In this movie, we're going to allow our wizard to exercise his God-given right to uh, shoot magic at things. So we're going to do that by talking about the scale transform. And we're going to do that in a couple different ways. First, we're going to start out in the wizard with staff composition here. And basically, this wizard has a staff. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate this glow to scale up and down. So select the staff glow property. Make sure scale is showing. If it's not, hit the letter S for scale. And you'll also want to make sure that the anchor point is centered here. Just like rotation, scale depends on anchor point for its transform. So if we increase the scale value, it will scale up around that anchor point. However, if we were to take this anchor point and move it, I'm holding down the Y key here, and move it over here, then when we scale up this glow, it's going to scale out from that point. So big difference. Now I'm going to undo that, hitting Control and Command Z a few times. I'll take this back to 100, and I am going to click the stopwatch for scale, and we can just move out in time and increase the scale value, and then move out in time and change it again. What I'm going to do to change it now, instead of the timeline, is I'm going to go into the composition panel, and I'm going to click on one of these corner points and scale it down this way. Now, you got to be careful when you're using the corner points. As you can see, you could scale things horizontally and vertically and really get them out of whack, so I definitely don't want to do that. Well, not now anyways. I mean, if you had a glow like this, you could scale it uh, up and, and get it all skewy, and that's okay for something like this. But in most cases, you want to keep those things proportional. So I'm going to undo this. And if I hold the Shift key while I'm scaling this up and down, you'll notice that my proportions are constrained. The width and height remain proportional while I'm scaling here. Again, as with position, I'm more of a timeline guy, but it's all up to your personal preference. There really is no right or wrong way. So I can uh, keep going in here and putting random values. Now if I hit the home key and play this back, we have some cool glowing magic. I'll just hit the letter N for the end of my work area and preview that now. And that looks pretty good. Now let's talk about another aspect of scale. We mentioned just a minute ago about how if you click on one of these corners, and then drag out, you can really mess things up. But in some cases, that might be what you want. To get more control over scaling things in this way, you could actually click this little chain icon, which will unlink the X and Y scale, which is what these two values are. Let's see how this works in the real world. I'm gonna go over this wizard with lightning composition. And I'm gonna select lightning bolt one. And I'm gonna hit the letter S for scale. And you'll notice as I scale up, the anchor point is in the center. I'm going to undo that. I actually don't want to make any changes just yet. So I'm going to hit the letter Y and hold it down and move the anchor point all the way to the left edge of the lightning bolt. And now when I scale this down, I could scale it till it's non-existent to 0%. If I click away to deselect that, you really can't see it at all. So what I can do is click the stopwatch for scale, and I am going to move out in time a little bit, scale this back up a little ways, then what I can do if I wanted to is to unlink width and height. I'm just going to hold down the spacebar key, click and drag to move over, and then let go of the spacebar key. Move out in time again, and then just animate the X value. And you see the difference that makes. So he can kind of snap his lightning bolts and shoot things out that way. As I increase this, and you can see what the result is. So that's it for scale. If you'd like to continue on using this scale project, you can find the Chapter 5 folder. Feel free to animate lightning bolts 1 and 2 according to your liking. In the next movie, we're going to look at how to create pauses in your animation.